Today we're gonna to do a little bit of a silly exercise, but that being said, I think it's still pretty interesting and I find things like this fun from time to time. So let's say we have two lines, L1 and L2. The equation of L1 is Y equals M1X plus B1. So that's in slope intercept form. And then the equation for L2 is Y equals M2X plus B2. And then our goal is to show that L1 is perpendicular to L2 if and only if the product of their slopes is negative one. So this is the classic rule that you learn just after graphing lines that lines are perpendicular whenever their slopes are negative reciprocals. And in fact, the challenge I wanna do here is only use methods available to a student who has just learned how to graph lines. So these types of students have maybe never seen vectors, so they don't know about the dot product, which is for sure the easiest way to do this type of problem. And furthermore, they may not be like adept at applying transformations to move things around the plane. So we're gonna keep this as general as possible. Okay, so let's start with sketching a mock-up of this situation. And like I said, this is just a mock-up. So anything that we see here is just to kind of get our brains thinking about the equations that we should write down. Okay, so let's color code things a little bit. So maybe I'll take this yellow dot to be everything for this line L1. So let's maybe say that B1 is right here along the Y axis. And then we have a positive slope. So let's say this is our line L1. So like I said, we have a positive slope. And now let's draw line L2 and maybe we'll draw that in pink. So here I'll put a pink dot here just to point that out. Okay, and let's maybe put B2 down here. Good. And let's maybe have this have a negative slope. But like I said, this is really just a mock-up. And let's draw it so it's maybe close to perpendicular, but not exactly perpendicular. Okay, nice. So the first thing that we'll do is find the intersection point. So this intersection point will be in terms of M1, M2, and L1, and, and B1 and B2. Okay, so let's do that. So let's find out when M1X plus B1 is the same thing as M2X plus B2. But notice that's equivalent to saying M1 minus M2 times X is B2 minus B1. Just moving some things around. But then we can divide by M1 minus M2. We can do that because I guess we're assuming without really saying it carefully that these lines are not parallel. So that means they intersect. So that would give us an X value of B2 minus B1 over M1 minus M2. Okay, so just to be clear, that is the X coordinate of our intersection point. And then how do we find the Y coordinate? Well, we need to plug it into either our first equation or our second equation. Let's maybe go ahead and plug it into our first equation. That'll give us M1 times B2 minus B1 over M1 minus M2 and then plus B1. So something like that. Now let's give ourselves a common denominator just so this starts to look nicer. So I'll multiply this by M1 minus M2. Then that means I need to divide it by M1 minus M2. So now expanding out the numerator gives me M1 B2 minus M1 B1 plus M1 B1 minus B1 M2. Then this is all over M1 minus M2. But some stuff cancels there. Notice that this M1B1 cancels with this M1B1. And we're left with M1B1 minus, maybe we'll write it in M2B2 over M1 minus M2. Okay, so that means we can go over here and write this coordinate. So let's maybe write this coordinate here. This has X coordinate 
B2 minus B1 over M1 minus M2. And then it has Y coordinate M1 B1 minus M2 B2 over M1 minus M2. So it's a little bit of a mouthful, but I think that's okay. That'll at least get us started. So again, that's the coordinate of our intersection point. So where are we gonna go from here? I think the best next goal is to find a point on either line, which is not this point. So perhaps it would be this point right here, and we could even take the same X coordinate, so this point right underneath. And you might say, well, how do we pick this point? Well, I think we can probably pick it like semi at random, but maybe for the sake of argument, let's take it to be one unit away from this intersection point along the X axis. Okay, so that means we'll know what this X coordinate is. This X coordinate will be B2 minus B1 over M1 minus M2 plus one. And now we'll calculate the corresponding Y coordinates. So we chose the following X coordinate to be the building block for our two additional Y coordinates. And I've written it over here. Now our goal is to find the points on these two lines, L1 and L2, where we take this X coordinate. If you put it all together, you get this B2 minus B1 plus M1 minus M2 over M1 minus M2. Okay, so now we've got a bit of work to do. Let's first start with the calculation to find the point on L1. So that means we'll have Y equals M1 times all of this. So B2 minus B1 plus M1 minus M2 over M1 minus M2 and then plus B1. So now let's do a little bit of simplification. So maybe we'll distribute this M1 through and then we'll give that B1 a common denominator. So we'll have M1 B2 minus M1 B1 plus M1 squared minus M1 M2 and then plus B1 M1 minus B1 M2. Okay, that's all over M1 minus M2. Okay, nice. And now let's notice that some stuff cancels. So this M1 B1 will cancel this B1 M1, but then nothing else cancels. It almost looks like this M1 B2 will cancel that guy over there, but it will not. Okay, so now let's write down carefully what we have. We'll have M1 B2 plus M1 squared minus M1 M2 minus B1 M2. This is, like I said, all over M1 minus M2. Okay, great. And that's our coordinate up here on L1. Okay, so let's write all that out up here. So notice we have an X coordinate of B2 minus B1 plus M1 minus M2 over M1 minus M2. And then we have a Y coordinate, which is all of that. So now let's get that coordinate recorded here. Okay, so there we've got it. We've got our coordinate on this point on L1. Now we need to do the same thing for L2. So that means we'll have Y equals, so the slope for L2 is M2. Then we have to multiply into this X coordinate up here, which I've recorded. So that's B2 minus B1 plus M1 minus M2 over M1 minus M2 and then plus B2, because that's our equation for L2. Okay, so now let's multiply all of this out. That'll give us M2 B2 minus M2 B1 plus M1 M2 and then minus M2 squared and then plus B2 M1 minus B2 M2 from making a common denominator. Okay, and now if we have any sort of symmetry between this and the last case, we should have one term cancel. And in fact, we do, and it is this M2, B2 term. So that is going to cancel with that. 
And then we've got our y coordinate corresponding to the following goal x coordinate on this line L2. Okay, so now let's sneak that coordinate in here. Okay, so now we've got this coordinate here. But now how can we use these three coordinates to find out if this is actually a right angle? Well, we're gonna use the fact that a triangle only satisfies the Pythagorean theorem when you have a right angle. So we'll complete a triangle here. Well, we'll give it a name. So let's maybe say this is A, B, and C. And we want this to be a right angle, which means we would want this to be the hypotenuse, which means we would want A, B squared plus A, C squared to be equal to B, C squared where A is this coordinate, B is this coordinate, and C is this coordinate. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this picture and only keep exactly what we need for our final calculation. Okay, so I've brought all of the pertinent information to the top here. Those are those three coordinates. And let's maybe take a quick minute to recall that these two lines will be perpendicular if and only if the distance from a to b squared plus the distance from a to c squared is the same thing as the distance from b to c squared. That means that we had constructed a right triangle in our picture. Okay, so let's just get started calculating these distance squareds. So let's calculate a b squared first. So by the distance formula, since we're taking the square here, we don't have a square root in the distance formula. We'll just look at the difference in the x coordinates squared and then plus the difference in the y coordinates squared. Okay, well let's notice the difference in the x coordinates will cancel this b2 minus b1 out. So that's pretty nice. And we'll just be left with m1 minus m2 over m1 minus m2 squared. So that's the distance in the x coordinates. That actually shouldn't be that big of a surprise based off how we constructed our points B and C from the point A, which remember that was the point of intersection. Now we need to take the difference in the Y coordinates squared. So notice some stuff cancels here as well. We'll have M1, B2 minus M1, B2, that cancels. Then we'll have negative M2, B1 minus the same thing right there. So those two cancel, leaving us with something pretty nice. Just M1 squared minus M1, M2 all over M1 minus M2. And then this whole thing is squared. Okay, so let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. So this clearly just gives us the number 1. And then here we can factor an m1 out of this. That'll give us m1 squared. And then we'll be left with something like m1 minus m2 over m1 minus m2 quantity squared. So in the end, we'll get 1 plus m1 squared. So that's the distance from a to b quantity squared. And now let's find the distance from a to c squared. Okay, so there's a lot of nice cancellation here as well. So notice the di difference in the x coordinates will give us the same kind of thing. Again, that shouldn't be much of a surprise based off of how we constructed those x coordinates. And let's see what cancels for the difference in the y coordinates. So we have an m1, b2 here. That'll cancel this m1, b2 here. So that's good. And then we'll have an M2, B1, which will cancel this M2, B1, leaving us with M1, M2 minus M2 quantity squared over M1 minus M2, and then all of that is squared. But let's note that that will simplify down to one plus M2 squared. And so I think it probably shouldn't be that big of a surprise that there's some nice symmetry built into these two expressions. So now let's work on finding the distance between a or b and c squared. So notice that the distance in the x coordinates is zero, but that's by our construction. Let's see what we get for the difference in the y coordinates. So let's notice this m1, b2 will cancel this m1, b2. This b1, m2 will cancel this b1, m2. And then we'll have m1 squared minus 2m1m2. 
and then mine it, and then plus m2 squared, and then that's all happening over m1 minus m2, and then that's all squared. But this looks pretty nice. Notice that we can most definitely factor out that numerator to m1 minus m2 quantity squared. That's all over m1 minus m2, and then we're squaring that. Okay. So now we'll have this term, we'll cancel one of these, and we'll, we're left right with m1 minus m2 quantity squared. But now we can multiply out what's left over. That'll leave us with m1 squared plus, or minus 2m1 m2 plus m2 squared. But let's recall that we want the sum of these two terms to equal this last term. So let's see what, what it would take for that to happen. Well, we can cancel out this m1 squared with this m1 squared, this m2 squared with this m2 squared, and that leaves us with a very simple equation of negative 2 m1 m2 equals 2. But we can easily move some things around and we'll see that m1 times m2 equals negative 1, which is exactly where we wanted to end up. And then you might say, well, we have an if and only if statement over here, but all of these steps were reversible. And the Pythagorean theorem is an if and only if statement itself. So this means that we're good to go. And that's a good place to stop.